Hey guys, uh, welcome to the tutorial. Um, okay, so to get rolling, uh, this this is going to be a, a walk cycle, and I'm going to go over this <coughs> um, as quickly as I can. So, um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start out. I'm going to turn off geometry selection. I don't want to be able to select my geometry actually. <laughs> Make a couple edits to this scene quickly. Gonna go show none, show curves, and show polys. Awesome. Okay. I'm gonna grab this and just zero this stuff out a little bit. There we go. Okay, so to start with, I'm going to um, be animating this character. It's just gonna be a, a walk cycle, just a generic walk cycle, and we'll move on to some other. Um, other types of cycles in a little while. Um, I'm going to try and use a different character for, for each of these cycles just so we can sort of start seeing the differences that we might find in, in character controls. <coughs> so to get started I'm going to decide how many frames I want for this walk cycle and in this particular case I'm going to choose 32. So I'm going to have a 32 frame cycle and I'm going to start from frame 0 instead of frame 1. Now the reason for that is so that I can chop one frame off and still have a 32 frame cycle as opposed to a 33 same. 33 frame cycle. <coughs> and it will also help me divide up my keyframes much more evenly. So to start with, I'm going to start with, with one of the legs. And I'm going to start with the leg in the, in the forward position. So it's going to start forward. And I'm going to take it as far forward as I can go. As we can see, this character's got a little piston on his leg here. And if I, if I start too far forward, that piston pops out of its socket, which is probably not what we want. I've set a keyframe, it's gone to frame 1 for whatever reason. Got that keyframe there, and then I'm going to go to my last frame, set a keyframe, and then go to my mid frame, which is 16 in this case, and move the leg back as far as it can go, so to roughly about there. So now I have this leg going back and forward, as I would probably expect. So I'm now going to go into my curve editor, and actually go into my good curve editor. There we go both the same, it's just one's two panes, one three panes, I just prefer the two panes. Okay, so I'm going to press F on this curve, so at the moment I've just got uh, Translate Z information, now all of these other curves have uh, keyframes placed on them because I'm using the S on the timeline to set the keyframe as opposed to right clicking on an attribute and going key selected. Now for a lot of this we'll be doing it by this method as to not uh, root out or not to damage the, the editing that we do to our curves as, as we move along. I'm going to go to this keyframe, key and this is a heavy character, so at the moment if we if we take a look, let's make sure all my timeline's playing real time, as we watch now we'll see that our legs sort of travelling back and forth relatively linearly. There is a little tiny bit of uh, ease in and ease out just because I have my, my tangent handle set to plateau in my animation um, settings. So if we come to animation settings, you can say I've got them set to plateau, and that will just ensure that all of my tangent handles, whenever I press the keyframe, um, will be flat tangents. And I've also checked my weighted tangents so that it will save me save me a click if I have to if I want to weight these tangents. I don't have to select a keyframe and go right click and then weight the tangent and so on and so forth. I can just select them and press my free tangent weight tool and I can just straight away go and start editing the weights. And that's the first thing I'm going to do here. So I'm going to edit the weights on this leg because it's moving too linearly. If we take a look at this character, he looks like a big sort of meaty character and I would expect him to have to put quite a lot of effort into sort of, sort of picking his leg up to speed. Um, so to get that, to convey that effort, I'm going to sort of really stretch out these translate Cs. So he really has to sort of, so he takes off really, really slowly and then sort of as he gets to the middle, he gets pretty quick and then he has to sort of put a bit of effort into slowing his leg back down again. So I'm going to just grab all of these tangent handles and stretch them out on the stretch their weighting out a little bit. I'm actually going to do it quite a lot because I want this effect to be fairly pronounced. And then as we play through we should see that it's really sort of starting to slow down, but I want it to be even even more than that. I want it to be something more like that in this particular example. So his legs really slowing down on the back and slowing down on the front, which is just pretty much just what I'm after. Okay, so now that I've done that, I can go to my Translate Wise, and I can sort of see, okay, well, his foot's forward on the front frame, coming back on the 16th, so on frame 24, this is where his foot's going to be lifting up, so I'm going to lift his foot up, 
and I'm actually going to right click on my translate Y and key that selected and that way I'm not damaging it, I'm not adding a keyframe just here. If I was to set a keyframe there we can see that I've got it set to plateau so it's going to try and plateau that out and it's going to damage that keyframe which is not what I want. So I can now come back into here and I can have a look at this, this curve. So the method I'm going to be using today is I'm just going to be sort of going through all my curves as I place, place the keyframes. Um, that way we don't have this big mess of curves that we have to clean up at the end and tend not to do it very very well when you just have a big mess of curves sitting there and you just really don't want to do anything with them. So we're going to work work on the curves as we go and it's going to make our life a lot easier. It's going to take a little bit more time but um, we'll get a much better result. So the leg's travelling back nice and fast and it's slowing down um, quite a lot. So I want that same sort of um, effort to be applied for the lift of the leg. So he's lifting his leg and again it's a relatively heavy leg so I want that to take quite, a, quite an amount of effort. And the other thing that I want to try and achieve with this up and down motion is I really want him to be slamming his leg into the ground um, as opposed to sort of coming down gently and slowing and easing and I want it to really sort of smash into the ground just like we do with a ball bounce. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my tangent handle for the, for the the y-axis and I'm going to stretch this up so that it's his foot's careering into the ground. So if we play that back, his foot should look a little bit more like it's stomping now. This curve is still a little bit shallow so we can go ahead and fix that up in a sec. What I might actually do is I'm actually going to grab this keyframe on 24 and pull it over to frame 28. Yeah, frame 20, yeah, that's right. I'm going to bre uh, break this tangent handle and I'm going to grab this curve point here and I'm just going to stretch it out so that I can get something that's a little, little bit more like gravity. So his foot should really appear to be slamming into the ground now. Now it might be a little bit too pronounced so I might just dial that back a little bit. Now he's sort of really sort of popping that leg down, which is just a, that's kind of what I want to try and achieve here. I might also do the same thing on this handle. I might pull it out so he's actually taking a little bit longer to sort of pick his leg up to speed. Okay, grab this one and just stretch this out. Maybe three units. I usually, when I'm working with tangent handles, I like to sort of just use this, this grid as a bit of a, a guide so I can use that as reference when I'm adjusting other tangent handles that sort of to intermingle with other curves and such, as we'll sort of see a bit more later. And now, that's pretty good, but I want his leg to traverse upwards a little more, so he's not really going close enough to clipping his, his geometry, so I really want him to sort of stomp down on this bar here, so I'm just going to pull that curve up there. Make sure it's not clipping, and it's just not clipping. That's awesome. It's just what I want. Now, if we have a look, I might need to adjust this curve here again. Now, if we watch as this goes, he's really stomping that leg down. Which is, it's just what I'm after. I might dial that back just a fraction. Oh, that's not back just a little tiny bit. Just sort of smooth it out a little bit so it's not quite so rough, and that's, that's much better. Just small edits on these curves can make a huge difference, so um, it's a good idea just to sort of keep in mind the power of this curve editor and how easy it is to sort of damage your animation and make it look jumpy by just sort of adding keyframes and just not really worrying about um, how the curves are looking. Because if the curves look bad, then Nine times out of that, nine times out of ten, so will the animation. Okay, so I've got this leg doing what I need the leg to be doing. And now it's sort of time to focus on what I want the foot to be doing. So from frame from frame uh, zero, I want the foot to be sort of up a little bit. I'm just going to sort of place this part where I need it. 
frame 16, it's going to be opposite. So the foot's going to be sort of tweaked up. And then at frame 24, it's going to be down again. Okay, so I've done that bit, and again, it's a matter of just going into the curves and adjusting the, the stuff that I've done, so it's on the rotate Z in this particular example. And I'm going to smooth these curves out, I'm going to spline them. I'm going to grab both of these and press the spline tool, and that basically just tries to um, match each side of the tangent handle with both the incoming curve to the keyframe and the outgoing curve from that keyframe. So, as we can see, this has tried to to match the two tangent handles and that will usually give us nice smooth curves as opposed to something that looks a little more less smooth and we'll see sort of how that translates as we go along now I'm going to need another keyframe at around about 8 and this keyframe at um, 8 is going to be um, a null keyframe so it's going to be it's actually probably going to sort of snap at 4, but I'm going to take it from 8 to start with. And this is where I want my rotation to be non-existent, so in this case it's minus 90. I'm going to set a keyframe on that. And I'm going to grab my, my foot and I'm actually going to push it down to the ground. Pull it up on this first frame. Really want him to sort of look like he's pushing down. Now I'm going to try and take care of any clipping that happens with this uh, foot section sort of as we go along. And again, trying to make sure that my curves are relatively curved. The spline tool doesn't always um, spline your curves out with a nice curve as you'd expect. Now, I mean, we could get this with uh, a weighted tangent, um, but for the time being, I'm just going to. Uh, not worry about that. Um, we can always come back in and get rid of that if we need to, but this is working pretty well. Now, this is going to need to happen at... So this is going to be minus 90, and it's going to be flat on the ground. I want it to put to be flat at frame 4. So if you just sort of slapped it down. I'm going to plateau this curve. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to grab the toes. I'm relatively happy with that. I'll just sort of double check and make sure it's playing back as I would expect it to. Now we've got a really nice stomp going on there. It's really sort of stomping down, which is just what I want. I've actually made a mistake, but it's actually making it look better, so I might actually go with that mistake. The mistake I've made is I've got um, this keyframe at the end is not the same as this keyframe for whichever. It's up and down, translate wise. Yeah, so that's where the problem's happening. So this keyframe is not set to the same as this one at the end. I'll remedy that for now, and I might be able to come back and fix that later on. Copy that one, paste it onto here. I may need to adjust that later on, but we'll go with that for the time being. Again, I'm going to spline these.
girl, I cannot live without And you know there's no doubt that All our minds Excellent. lose in you Okay, so now I'm going to work on the toes. So from this initial position, I want the toes to be up. Make sure I select the right controller for the job. The toes are going to be up in this position. So I'm going to make sure I set them both up. And in the back position, they're going to be the opposite. They're going to be sort of down on the ground. And I'll adjust that position of the foot later on to, to better suit that keyframe. Actually, no, I'll do that now. So these are going to be like so on frame 8. That'll actually happen much quicker. That'll happen on about frame 4. There'll probably be a little bit of delay on that section. So from frame 24, the toes are going to be the opposite. They're going to be hanging down. And then, like, sort of like so. Nice, graceful. So that sort of floatiness will come out when we um, do a little bit of offsetting and stuff with the with the toes and such. So now I'll work on the back back one. So from this position, the, the toe is going to be relatively high. Now it's clipping through geometry, but I'm really not going to worry too much about that. Um, you can probably get away with not noticing that so much. It's not clipping too badly. So, so I'll set the keyframe there, and it will be the same for that end keyframe. For this keyframe, I want the toe to be again touching the ground, so he's like sort of clawing the ground on the back step. Frame 8 is going to be like so. Frame 4, I want this to be clamped on the ground as well. Now again, we could go in and we could make these a little bit more believable by, by adjusting the curves on these, but um, I'm going to sort of ignore that for the time being, just to sort of get through this a little bit more quickly, but at the same time, we could go in and we could adjust these curves just as easily as we've adjusted some of our other curves, so we could come in and we could um, sort of modify these curves a little bit to give us something more akin to what we're actually after. Keyframe's kind of unneeded. We'll get rid of those ones as well and see how that looks. So, but again, just as we did before, we could probably weight these curves a little bit if we wanted to. Maybe this one here we could weight, kind of like, kind of like so. So that the Start and end positions are the same. They are. I actually add a little bit of bump to this, so I'm going to add a keyframe there.
always needed time on my own I never thought I'd need you there when I cry And the days feel like years when I Actually, I'll do that. I'll add that little bounce later on. I'm happy with how that is for the time being. We can tweak it as we as we go. I'm gonna add, try and add a little bit more weight with his foot. I'm going to pick pick this section here up, and then at frame four, I want to really squash in. Frame eight, I want it to be back to normal. a little bit so they're, so they're again sort of flaring up in preparation for this stomp that's, that's about to come. Probably even happen a little bit slow, but we'll just go with this for now. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm going to sort of transfer this information over to the other foot. Alright, so when we come back, we'll go over copying this animation from one foot to the other, and then we can work on other things such as our um, x axis and the curves on the foot and all that sort of stuff as well. So we'll be back in just a little while. Okay, so welcome back. So as you can see, we've got this um, foot walking action now. We could probably um, spend a little bit more time on this, but this is actually not, not, not too bad. This is pretty much what I'm after. So the process I'm going to use now is I'm going to copy the information that I've added to this foot um, over to this foot. Now, the only animation that I've done on this on these controllers are animations in the Z axis, so back and forwards, and in the Y axis, up and down. Now, the reason for, for ignoring my X axis is I want to be able to nice and easily transfer these keyframes onto this foot. And if I've done uh, X axis keyframes, then those won't transfer onto this foot. So if, if, I move the, if I move the foot in this direction and I add these keyframes onto this foot, this foot will also move in this direction where in this case I want the foot to actually go in the opposite direction but so that's the reason for sort of not doing those keyframes just yet so I'm sort of getting it to a stage where I can copy what I need and then I can sort of go over and add that extra information as we go so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the, the controller just here I'm going to shift click and drag up to frame 32 so I have all of my keyframes for that foot selected and I'm going to right click and copy and now I'm going to select my other foot and I'm going to save my scene very quickly 
he's going to call it Generic Walk. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to frame 16. Actually, no, I'll just go to frame 1. I'm just going to copy and paste these keyframes straight to frame 1. So copy, paste. And now, as we can see, um, because my feet aren't zeroed in a, in a default position, they're actually sort of set five and five apart. Now, depending on the rig, this may or may not happen. Um, if the controls are sort of zeroed out, or someone used use freeze transforms, then this won't be an issue. But on this particular rig, I uh, didn't zero out my control curves, which is a bit of a no-no. So, to remedy that, however, all I need to do is I just need to right-click on my Translate X axis, because I know I've set no keyframes on my X. So I'm going to right-click and I'm going to break the connections for that controller. And now I'm just going to get rid of this minus. And now I should see that my feet move uh, virtually identically. There's a little bit of difference because I've got other uh, curves that I need to add this information to. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to grab this curve. Actually, sorry, this one. Grab all the keyframes off this one. I'm basically just going to sort of copy and paste everything straight over to the other leg so they're both doing the same thing and then we'll work on the offsetting. So I'm going to paste. So again I need to go in and break the connection. I'm just going to edit this one a little bit. set up a little bit differently. Anyway, so we've got most of these feet controls working. Just need to grab this back one, copy and paste this one on. Copy. Paste. Get rid of the X. I'm just going to grab these curves and reposition them a little bit so that they're touching the ground. Same for this one. Kid, I grew up in a house on a hill, not the top, not the bottom, but the middle. And I still remember where I cracked my head in the vacant lot. There's a row of tiny houses there now, and we used to light fires in the gutters. And I could cool my head on the concrete steps, but the girl down the street hit my sister on the head with a stick. And we hid behind my father as he knocked on the parents' door to tell him what she did, but the parents 
just sort of re sort of re signing this curve so that it's Now I got the feet roughly doing the same thing. But the last key frame the same. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab all of these, all of these components. That's all the components on that foot. And I'm going to come into my graph editor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of these curves and move them directly over to frame 16. So they start from frame 16. So one foot won't do anything, but we'll now we'll have this offset where the other foot's doing what we need it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend my timeline to frame 48 in this case, which is the end frame. And I'm going to grab everything in between and including frame 32. Now the reason I'm doing this is frame 32, is, as we've sort of moved all these keyframes so they start from 16, um, at the midpoint of our cycle was 16 initially, so seeing as 16 is now our start point, we need to go 16 frames over, and that's now the midpoint of this part of the cycle. So I need to grab all of this information, and what I'm basically doing is picture it like this. I'm chopping off this part of the curve and placing it on the other side so that from frame zero it's actually playing from the halfway point of this cycle um, and that will effectively give us the offset that we desire for this animation so I'm going to grab from frame 32 to frame 44 I'm going to copy those and I'm going to paste them from frame zero paste and now I'm going to delete everything after frame 32 set my timeline back to frame 32 and now we should have animation that's working should have So for the most part, we've got the keyframes on each each side of the feet. Now there's an issue here where the start frames aren't the same as the end frame. So the key feet are splayed in the end frame on that one, but they're not in this one. So I'm going to grab all of these control curves, and I'm going to just make sure they're the same just by setting a keyframe at the end.
There we go. Okay. All right, so for the next part, I'm going to work on the, on the hips. <laughs> I'm relatively happy with how the feet are sort of traversing back and forward, so I'm going to work on the hips now. So as we know, the, the hips will follow the leading foot from the first frame, so I'm going to go about doing that. And then at frame 16, I'm going to make sure that I've got symmetrical animation here. I don't have to, it's just something I like to do. So it tends to lead to smoother animation. So at the moment here we're just rotating around with each part, which is exactly what we want. So the next part happens on the in-between frames, and that's when the leg that's raised, the hip falls in that direction. I'm going to add a little bit of fall. And I'm going to middle mouse click drag to frame 24 so that I can just take the minus away on this one. I'll get the exact opposite rotation, and then I can just set that keyframe. Keep in mind, um, <laughs> what I've done is something I have a bad habit of doing. I have forgotten to go and select my gimbal controller for my rotation. Now, seeing as I've done that and I've already started doing animation, um, it's sort of got two options. Either I can restart the animation with my gimbal controller or I can just forget about it and just continue using this one. Um, because if we switch to one now, then our animation is, is undoubtedly will be broken somewhere if we use two different types of rotation controllers. So I'm just going to stick to this one, let's figure out which one it is. It's the local rotation controller. So I'm going to make sure that I use my local rotation controller for this whole animation. Okay, so now we should see that we've got some rotations happening as we, as we would like them to. Now the body's rotating as well. Um, so we're going to need to sort of counteract that rotation, um, but we'll get to that in a little while. I'm also going to add my up and downs on the hips, so on frame 8 is where the down is going to happen. And again, I need to make sure that I'm not clipping animation too heavily. A little bit of clipping is okay, we can deal with a little bit. down so that all these pistons are connected. In this case that is that point there. And I'm going to lower these sections for when he's sinking through the ground. Now that's a fraction low. <laughs> so I might not go quite so deep. Subtle for the up and down. Think about the love inside the strength of heart. Alright, so now I've done all the 
the animation I'm going to do on here. Oh, well, actually, I'll do the translate X as well, sorry. Minus two. Copy that number. I'm going to edit this curve so that it's a nice matching curve on both ends. And I'm going to go ahead and do my weighting on these tangent handles. Which means I'll we'll need to readjust this. That's okay. Like so. Really heavy walk. This really. a character like this would really need to reposition his weight because he's very top heavy. So he'd actually need to put a fair bit of effort into balancing balancing himself over each leg as he as he traverses. Um, now I'm going to adjust the rest of my rotations. So I'll go to my Y rotations. I'm going to get rid of these two keyframes because they're just going to sort of chop up my animation and make it not quite so smooth. I'm also going to grab all of these um, tangent handles, free their tangent weights and actually make them a bit heavier, give it a sense of actually sort of forcing his action a bit more. These rotations as well, just the same as I did before. Actually I'll wait the tangents first because I don't have to come back and do those parts anyway. Now we should see that we've got a really swingy action as he's sort of walking. He's really putting a lot of effort into taking these steps. Now the top of his body is really moving a lot, but we're going to sort of cancel that out by animating the the, um, the sort of upper torso controller. For the moment, I'm basically just sort of focusing on his legs as much as I can. Now I'm going to add a little bit of X direction to these to these legs. So this position here to frame 16, I, want, I need to move inwards um, a little bit. So I'm going to go to my rotate, translate these ones. And move these in a fraction. Not a huge amount, I want it, don't want it to be too feminine. Um, but I do want them to come in a little bit. If he's sort of trying to step in line. And this end frame will go back to there as well. So at frame 24 on the translate X, I'm going to set a key. And then I'm going to grab the information off this curve because I want this curve to be back at that point. So I'm going to copy that, select that keyframe, and then paste that information in. Then we should get the leg swinging out as it's coming back around. I might actually make him flare his leg out a little bit more than you would expect. There we go, we've got a nice sort of curve happening there where he's really sort of swinging his leg out before he comes in for the stamp. And again, I'm going to grab these tangent handles and just weight them. Come on, let me select it. There we go, a nice sort of smoothed out. So now we need to do the same thing with the other foot. Now 
All right, so I need to set the keyframes on this. So I need to set a keyframe there, set one on 16. Key selected. And it's gonna be frame eight on this one where the foot swings out. So I'm gonna add my keyframe there. And this one is going to flare out kind of the opposite amount as the other one. So it's gonna go up. I just want to see how much I pulled, pulled this one up by. So this, the difference is minus 2.3 going to 5-ish, so the difference is minus 2.7. So this is 4.3, so 2.7 on top of 4.3 is roughly about 7. And on top of that, the whole lot's going to come in as well. 